Hi, Yarnabees. How are you today? We got some talking to do today. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. So this isn't going to be all yarny stuff. It's going to be kind of all over the place. Um, some update stuff and some yarny stuff. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Um, yeah. So grab yourself something to drink and have a sit down with me. Okay. First things first, I would like to do a shout out. Okay. I had no idea when I did the Yarnapalooza that one of our winners was, um, a YouTube person. She has her own channel. Yes. Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca is from, I'm hoping I'm going to say this right. Circada, Cir Circada Crafts. I'll put it right here and I will put her link down below. Um, yeah, she's got her own YouTube channel. She's only been on YouTube for like four or five months, guys. So let's go give her some yarny love. Hi, Rebecca. I uh, Let's go give her some yarny love and click that subscribe button. Okay, um, I've got my book right here to kind of tell me what I'm talking about because <laughs> my brain has just been, uh, yeah. So, um, a couple days ago, I had a complete, complete meltdown. I mean, complete. I, I don't know what happened. Um, I was a raving lunatic. I noticed it the day before when I was working. Um, I went and did a delivery. I, I worked for Skip the Dishes, for those of you that are new that don't know. Um, and this restaurant, this restaurant, um, made me stand there for 20 minutes while they got everybody else's orders done and all the other skip the dishes and DoorDash people were gone. Uh, and I was still sitting there. I lost it and I went at them. Um, and then the day I had my meltdown, as you know, uh, I have been waiting for a Hirschner's order to come in with my Momenti yarn. It's been lost. My order's been lost for the last month. The tracking number says that it's at the post, at the um, Rexall Drugs post office here, and that they're trying to get me a COD order for the border fees and all that stuff. It's been saying that for a month. I've been to Rexall four times now, they don't know where it is. I've called Hirschner's five times. I've called the head office, the post office. They don't know what's going on. Now, there is a fight between Hirschner's and Canada. Well, or non-fight, should I say. Basically, um, the post office is saying that Hirschner's has to contact them and say the package, you lost our package. So we want our money back. Hirschner's is saying, we don't do that. The post office has to phone us. I've been having this back and forth with them for a couple of weeks. And I've been trying to explain to Hirschner's, no, Canada Post is not going to call you. If you want your money and you, if you, you know, if I want to get a refund for the $150 that I am about to lose, then you need to call the post office and tell them and put in a claim and say, hey, you guys lost our package. The first lady I talked to was nice. She was saying, you know, uh, we don't do that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, well, somebody has to do something because I'm out $150 and I want my money. And well, we can't do that unless there's a claim put in because, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was calling the post office. I was fighting with them going, look, somebody's got to do something. 
they said, you got to call Hirschner's and you got to tell them that they have to phone us and put in a claim. I said, I've already done that. He says, well, you know, you've got to fig you figure that part out. So I called Hirschner's back. I got a guy this time. He was so flippin' rude. Um, and he was saying, you know, we've done our part. It was delivered. And I said, it may have been delivered, but they lost the package and you guys need to deal with this. You know, it's not up to me. I didn't do anything, right? You guys have to fight it out and figure it out because I want my refund or I want new yarn. And Hirschner's won't budge. They were rude and they said, there's nothing we can do about it. We've, we've done our part. It was delivered. And I'm like, what kind of customer service are you? I says, I, I went off, you guys. I went off. And I started yelling at this guy. I started F-bombing. I, I went, my brain just went, zoop, and I went off. I said, I've been fighting with you guys for over a month. I made this order in June. And I says, I want my money or send me new yarn. That's it. And they, they won't do it. I have never had a problem with Hirschner's before, uh, until now. And I, um, I called the post office back and I talked to their manager and I said, you rip that bloody place apart and you find my package. And I, she said, I'll get right on it. And I haven't heard anything from them since. So I told her. If I have to go into the post office, I will be arrested because I will lose my complete shit in here. And I, she says, I totally understand. This is completely on us. And I said, I want my package. That's all there is to it. And I said, because Hirschner, Hirschner's is not going to give me new yarn. They are not going to, sorry, there's a fly in here. They are not going to give me my yarn. They are not going to give me a refund. I says, I am at my wits end. I says, I can't deal with this anymore because I'm just going to completely lose control. I lost control. Completely lost control. When I got off the phone with her, I, I got to deal with this fly. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> I'm good now. Anyway. So I, I told the guy, I went so far as to say, you know, you do you realize I have a YouTube channel. I am going to slander you all over YouTube. <laughs> oh my God. I totally broke. Anyway, uh, after I got off the phone with the lady at the post office, I sat for a second, took a deep breath and cried and cried and cried some more. I could not stop the tears. I called George, he's at work, and I unloaded on him. And I just, all of a sudden, it was like a waterfall of crap just came down on me and I could not mentally handle it. Things that I had no idea I was holding on to, things that I did not realize that I was feeling. Um, I contacted my bestie, Sandy Duda from Left is Right Crochet. I reached out to Jeanette from Miss Hootie Hootenance Crafts. Um, and I said, help. Um, I'm going to try really hard not to cry through this because it's, it's hard for me. Um, I realized in that moment 
that I was putting so much pressure on myself for my YouTube channel and for the fact that I don't feel like I'm financially helping George enough or because I, I physically can't. Um, I felt like I was letting you guys down because I'm not doing enough videos. Uh, like a whole bunch of stuff came down on me. I've got the grandbaby coming. Um, I started feeling like I needed to make a whole bunch of money so that I could help with the grandbaby. Um, I, it just, so many things started to crush me at that moment. And Sandy said to me, I've been seeing this coming for a little while. I knew that this something was going to happen and something had to give. Um, I didn't realize. I was totally blinded to it. Uh, and I did not think to take a mental health day. Um, <clears throat> and then she kind of walked me back from the cliff. Um, Jeanette was saying, you know, I'm here for you. I totally understand. I'm going through a lot right now too, because she's coming off a of medication. So she's all whacked out on in the brain. And I knew that she could relate to me at that moment. Um, I haven't had a mental break like that in years. And I didn't know what to do. Um, so I had a long talk with George and I also realized I, another thing that came down on me was George is working so much that him and I haven't had a chance to take a break and be together since the wedding. Well, actually in a long time, to be honest. Um, so but I felt guilty saying anything to him saying, Hey, I need some quality time with my husband. Uh, I felt guilty saying that because he's got so much on his shoulders right now, paying bills and all that kind of stuff. I didn't want to put more on him. Um, so yeah, I, I've, and I had a heart to heart with him. George, fine. I finally, I was at work and it, I, I finally just, I called George and I said, I need a day. I need to spend a day with you. Um, could you possibly take a day off? And he said to me, he says, you know, all you had to do was ask. And I would fit it in my schedule somewhere where I would take a day so that you and I could just go and do something. I know I can say that, but, you know, he is so focused on work, 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 um, that it's really hard to talk to him about this kind of stuff because um, he's got so much on his shoulders. He's feeling the stress. He's, you know, and I just, I don't want to add to it. So I've been bottling it, I guess. And um, yeah. So anyways, I had a complete meltdown and uh, then he took the took a day off and me him and bailey my puppy went to the beach and we swam in the ocean and i sat in the ocean and i just went and just let it all out um I felt so much better, 
so much better. Bailey felt better because she actually got to go for a walk and go and enjoy it. She got to, we threw the stick in the ocean and she got to go play. Um, she was bagged afterwards. She slept like crazy. She's been sleeping for days. Um, so George needed it too. He needed to be able to just take a step back and just, because I told him, I says, what is the point of life if you don't enjoy it? I says, one day you're going to look back and you're going to go, all I did was work. I didn't enjoy life at all. You know, and he said, I've done lots. You know, we used to go to concerts and all that. And I says, yeah, but for the last three years during COVID or now, I says, we haven't done anything together. And I think we need that. Um, and so, yeah, he agreed. And so that day was just really nice. And then, um, was it yesterday? Yesterday, I think he came home early and said, come on, let's go back to the beach. And I was like, what? He says, come on, grab the dog. Let's go. I was like, okay. So we dropped everything and we went and I tell you, it was just like everything just drained out of me. And I was just like, wow, it's amazing how just that, just that, uh, made such a big difference. So now I can get back to things. I have to stop putting so much pressure on myself. Uh, the movie marquee sweater that I was doing stressed me out, stressed me out. And then we have this heat wave going on and I can't work on it. And I had to throw up my hands and say, I didn't get it done. That was really hard for me. Um, I feel like I failed. I feel like I let you guys down um, and I have to stop thinking that way and I have to start thinking, hey, crap happens. You know, it's really hard for me to do that. So yeah, I, I just, I have this thing where it's like, I, I feel like I, I have to be showing you guys something all the time. I'm watching all these channels. Darla, how do you do it? Oh my good Lord. Darla and Jennifer from Cinnamon Stitches. Darla from Crafty Yarn Owl. Um, Dina from Homespun Fun. Uh, like I could just name off a whole bunch of people. They are just, they are getting stuff out left, right, and center. And I feel like I need to keep up with them. And I, I'm putting that pressure on myself and I'm going, I haven't done any tutorials and now I've got this tutorial that I, that's on hold because I don't have the momenti yarn and I'm just like pressure, pressure, pressure. I can't do that anymore. Like I just, oh, holy cow. Like I just, mm, you know, so I know you guys are all going to be like coming down on me saying, what are you doing, woman? You know, like, I know you guys are going to say, it's okay. What are you doing? Relax. But I just feel like I, I owe you guys so much because you guys have given me so much just by being here, by talking to me, by giving me all this love and support. Uh, I just feel like I've, I'm, I'm not holding up my end of the deal. You know, I just, oh, I don't know. Like, yeah, okay, I'm doing giveaways and stuff like that. But to be able to actually finish a project and show you and go, hey, look, you know, I just feel like I've lacked in that department. I've got all this yarn around me and I just feel like I, yeah, I don't know, guys. I, I don't know. Anyway. Okay, I'm going to stop rambling about that. All right. Um, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> I love you guys. 
Okay, so I was telling you that there's a heat wave right now and I couldn't do the sweater that I was doing and everything. But what I have been doing is, and it seems kind of ridiculous because it's heavy weight yarn and everything, but because it's such a small project, it seems to be okay as long as I have a fan on beside me. Um, I started, I, I'm starting to do my scooties again. Uh, and if you don't know what a scooty is, this, this is a scooty. It's a hooded cowl. Okay. Um, I have this pattern on my Etsy page, uh, which is linked down below. I, you know what? I never promote my Etsy page. <laughs> I just keep forgetting to. Um, but yeah, so I've been starting to make these again. Um, because I, I'm going to have, I'll tell you that in a minute. Um, so I started this one. I, ha I have to put the uh, string, the string on it and put the fur on it. And then this one is finished. Uh, and then I've got, th that was a Premier Serenity yarn, I think. I ran out, so I don't have the ball them. Then there was this one. Whoops. This one I've done. Uh, this one does have the string. I just have to get the fur on it. <clears throat> and this was Charisma, uh, Loops and Threads Charisma. And the color is strawberry multi. I figure strawberry is more red, but it's okay. <laughs> so that's that one. And now I'm working on, oh, I'm, all my stitches are coming out. Now I'm working on this one. I'm starting the hood part. <clears throat> and I'm just about to start the cowl. Uh... And this is Premier Serenity Chunky in the color Stormy. They don't have this anymore, I don't think. I could be wrong. But I think this is one of the colorways that... This one and this one, maybe. I don't... Oh, maybe not the Prisma. But I think this... I don't know if they have this anymore. But anyway... So that's what I've been working on. It's an easy project. It's something that I don't have to really think too much about. Um, and that I, I can see progress when I've done it. I'm very much a, um, a progress crocheter. I like to see the finished project. Um, I'm not a journey kind of, I, I like the journey. I like the pro, you know, doing the actual project. I'm not that person. I like to get it done, see what I've done. Uh, but I don't like the actual process of doing, which is weird. I know, but, um, that's why I don't like using thinner yarns and I don't like doing huge projects that I can't deal with because there's just not enough progress for me. Uh, and then I feel like I'm not doing anything. So that's, I'm doing that. I can't do any baby stuff until the um, gender reveal. So that's been put on hold. That's another one of those pressure things that I'm feeling. Okay, something else for those of you that are new that don't know, I make jewelry. <clears throat> I've been making a bunch. I haven't been putting anything up on my Etsy or on my Facebook page. Uh, page or anything because I'm just making so much stuff to send to the states that I just keep forgetting to put stuff up so um, I wanted to show you a couple of things that I've been making there's these earrings they're actually they're wings that come down and around um, I will put a picture up over here uh, of these earrings. These come in three colors. Um, they, they're really pretty. 
They're really pretty. I just love them. I started making little chain mail earrings. Um, I've been wanting to try this for a while. I just ordered a whole bunch of different size jump rings. I've got this gorgeous idea, this idea for this gorgeous, um, I think it's called a caged bead. Oh, I can't wait until they get here so I can try that. Those are going to be amazing. But for now, I just did these. I'll put a picture up as well. Um, they're little rosettes or whatever. Uh, flower, flower, whatever. These were tough to do because they are so small. <clears throat> I'm planning on making bigger ones when I get the bigger jump rings. But... Wow, that was a test of patience. And then I made um, these, which when I got the, the supplies for these to make, my first thought right off the bat was Seta from Seta's Place. Um, they're teapots. <laughs> How cute are these? I just love these. Um, I've got them in different colors, but I just, I fell in love with these. Uh, I'm thinking I might make some stitch markers with these for those that don't wear earrings. Um, but these ones I... I thought of set it right away. And these ones are lava rock. So you can put uh, a drop of essential oils on these. And so when you wear them, you can have the essential oils all around you um, and for, you know, healing, calming, whatever you need. Uh, so yeah, I just love these. So I made two different types. I made the teardrop type or the, the drop dangle type. And then I made smaller ones that don't have the dangles. So I made, oops, I made some brown, uh, some orange, I made some orange ones. So I was thinking of Laura from Alaska, uh, Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming. Then I made some white ones. I mean, I mean, I made a few. So yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, I'm gonna make some more bracelets. I have so many things I want to do, guys. I just ordered a whole bunch of beads. I ordered um, a whole bunch of gemstones, and I'm just waiting for them to get here. So, yeah. Okay. I want to talk about the elephant in the room that I haven't talked about. My hair. Oh. I have gotten so many compliments and so many comments about my hair. I was absolutely shocked. <laughs> For those of you that are new, my hair was long. I had about a foot and a half to two feet taken off my hair. And I colored it dark again. Um, you guys all went nuts when you saw my hair. I was just, I, I was just like, oh, wow. Um, yeah. So thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Um, okay. So reasoning. Uh, let's talk COVID hair loss. Uh, I had COVID in January. And I started realizing that I was losing my hair afterwards. It was coming out in clumps and handfuls. Um, 
I noticed on a few of my videos when I turned my head or when I looked down, there was bald patches. I was horrified. Absolutely horrified. And the videos were up and there was nothing I could do about it and I nobody said a word and I was just like I mean what are you gonna say oh hey Sandy you're losing your hair um <laughs> you know like I but yeah I I could not believe it and even now you can see like I'm yeah it's I'm, my hair has thinned so much. Uh, I try to keep it over to the side now. Because <laughs> there was a bald patch that was pretty horrendous over here somewhere. Um, but it's starting to grow back now. Uh, I, uh, I did some research. And I'm realizing that a lot of people that have had COVID has lost their, started losing their hair. All of a sudden there was a surge of companies that were saying, buy this ointment, buy this pill, buy this for to grow your hair, to blah, blah, blah. And I found a video and I'm going to look for it again. And I'm going to leave that link down below. This doctor explains the COVID hair loss thing. And He's totally right because what happens is, is once you've had a trauma like that, uh, whether it's when you have cancer and you've had your treatments, you've had something drastic happen in your life, uh, like any kind of a tragedy or um, something major medical, some, something medical, major medical thing, uh, COVID. Um, trauma like that will affect so many things in your body, but it will also affect your hair. And he explains the cycle that happens with your hair. Now, a lot of you might already see this. You'll have seen all this hair coming out and you're going, ah, right. And then three to four months later, you will notice that you are getting, I don't know if you can tell, I'm getting hair growing back. Okay. And I'm seeing all these little sprigs of hair that are just like, you know, I look like Edward Scissorhands with all this weird hair going on. Um, so he said they, it's a, like a three or four month cycle that happens once the hair follicle comes out and then starts to grow back in. Everybody was freaking out going, oh my God, my hair's up falling out and it's never going to grow back. It is. It's going to grow back. Um, it just takes three or four months for that cycle to happen. And then you will shed more and you will it will grow back. And it shed more. And I should have known this because I'm a freaking hairdresser. You know, like, but the thing is, is I've never lost that much hair that quickly before. And I was at, I was at a total loss. I was just like, what? Like, I didn't know what to do. So I was one of those people that was looking for a serum, a pill or something. And I was looking, going like, oh God, help me. And I came across this guy's video and it explained so much. So then I went, relax, just let it happen. And sure enough, I started getting all these, of course it all came in gray, damn it. But, um, it's, it's starting to come back. But I did notice with my long hair, it was weighing down and it was, I was noticing it way more. And the color I had was horrible horrible. I, why didn't you guys tell me? It was awful. So I colored my hair back to, well, it's starting to grow out again now, but, um, yeah, 
it and I thought do I color my hair blonde again to cover it and I thought no uh, because bleaching out your hair and everything's gonna destroy your hair again so I thought no I think I'm gonna go back to dark um, and wow you guys came out in droves it was all of a sudden just I was getting comment 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 and I was like, wow, okay, I made the right choice. I, the haircut I got, I, I don't know, I wasn't overly happy. The way I had it, the, the way she cut it before, I told her, I said I wanted an inverted bob. And, but the way she did, she obviously didn't know quite how to do it. Because she, she did it up high, she came down, but these pieces, it was like, it came down and then chunk. It was like long pieces and I went oh this is not working for me so I went in and I started cutting I cut that big chunk off my hair and made it a little more um, a little more inverted so now I think it looks better but um, yeah I feel better it's cooler, but it's still, it's, I still have some on my neck here. So if I notice that if my neck gets hot, I'm hot all over that and my feet, my feet and my neck, if that's not airing out and not cool, then I am just like pouring sweat all the time. So this is just a little, I don't know, it's a little bit long uh, in the back for me, but I'm going to keep it because I'm going to try and grow my hair out again. And see what happens or not I might not I don't know but <laughs> so thank you for all of your comments um, and I'm glad that you guys like it <laughs> this is gonna be a long video you guys holy cow um okay I talked about that <sighs> my diet and weight loss um I don't know I think I told you guys, for those of you that don't know, I was diagnosed with diabetes, type 2 diabetes, not too long ago, and they put me on medication for it. Uh, I realized I need to change my lifestyle. <clears throat> so George and I were talking about going back on keto. Uh, we ended up taking it a step further, and we started going on carnivore. The carnivore way of eating is pretty extreme. But the more I'm reading and the more research I'm doing, I'm thinking it's the right choice for us. I may be a little more keto carnivore than George, but um, the one thing that we do both have in common is that we are not eating any vegetables and we are not eating any fruit, which kills me because I love my fruit. <clears throat> vegetables, yeah, I can do without. Uh, eating meat all the time has been interesting. George has lost quite a bit of weight. Um, he's feeling fantastic. He's energized. He, he feels really good. Um, and for me, I was feeling pretty good about it in the beginning then I started to struggle a little bit and started thinking, oh, maybe I should be going a little more keto. Uh, but then, I don't know, some, I had a, a day of like elimination. And then now I'm feeling good again. <clears throat> so uh, now I'm kind of going, yeah, okay. So I went out grocery shopping yesterday and bought a crap ton of meat. Um, and eggs and all of that and we are gonna go for it so uh, I have actually lost two inches in my waist I've lost 10 pounds um, I my clothes are fitting better these pants that I've got on these cardi uh, capri pants that I've got on used to be really tight and I couldn't wear them. I just, I, I was just like, oh my God, I feel like I'm dying. I'm squishing. Now they fit comfortably. Um, and I'm going, oh, wow. 
So I don't know if you guys can see. So I'm starting to get this in here. Um, I, yeah, I'm feeling really good. So nice boob shot there. <laughs> I'm also losing in my boobs a little bit. George isn't happy about that. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know if this is going to be a forever thing for us. Um, it probably will for George. I've been, for years, I've been telling George, eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables. And he kept saying, no, I don't want them. I don't want them. And it's because his stomach, because he has diverticulitis, his stomach can't handle vegetables. And I kept thinking, you know, this is, you've got to do this, right? And no, he doesn't. So I've kind of gone to his side of the things and going, you know what? I don't think I need vegetables. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're doing. Please don't hate on us for that. Uh, we could really use support. Um, it's our choice to do this. And uh, it's so far so good. I want off my metformin. I want off my stomach pills. And from what I've read, get this will help me get off my stomach pills and it will help get rid of my GERD, my acid reflux disease. Speaking of that, I did a boo-boo last night. Big boo-boo. Uh, I had learned that apple cider vinegar helps acid reflux. I had this whole thing I, I, re I read about, you know, that the pills that I'm taking for my acid reflux is normal. Is, it's making my acid in my stomach, the um, alkaline instead of acidic. So all the meat that I'm eating and everything needs that to digest. So I'm going, okay, I need to get off these pills. I heard, I read that if you take apple cider vinegar, it will help get your stomach acids going again to help digest the food. And I'm going, oh, okay. Uh, and it will help you get off these pills. So I went out and got organic apple cider vinegar. And I thought, okay, I'm going to take a spoon, a tea, teaspoon of this before I go to bed. I took a teaspoon or the tablespoon, put it in my mouth. The minute it hit the back of my throat, my throat closed up instantly. And I couldn't breathe. And I was like, uh, uh, and I was panicked. I was went over to the sink. I'm trying to get water down me. I'm trying like just I, I'm thumping on the floor trying to get George's attention. He couldn't hear me. And I I could not breathe. And I was like, oh my God, call, you, somebody's going to have to call 911. Um, my throat is raw. <laughs> right? I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. <clears throat> my throat is raw. Um, and I just, I thought, oh my God, this was a bad idea. And then I realized, stupid, you're supposed to dilute it. <laughs> so, wow, what a lesson to learn. So I put two teaspoons in a, a bottle, a big bottle of water, and I'm going to try drinking that instead. That scared the living crap out of me. I mean, I'm claustrophobic, so if I can't breathe, I panic so bad, like having a cold and stuff where I can't breathe. I can't, I panic. So that it was instant. It was like the minute it hit, it just went, you know? Um, and I just, I thought, Oh my God, I'm going to die. This is the way I'm going to go. Death by apple cider vinegar. You know, like I, this stuff's supposed to be good for me. You know, like I just, I couldn't believe it. Um, so I'm not going to do that again. And I know that there's apple cider vinegar pills out there. So I think I'm going to go and look for those because that was no fun. <laughs> no fun at all. So yeah, that was my night. That was your night. <laughs> okay, guys, I think um, 
Oh, don't forget to go. I'll leave the card up here. Up here. I keep forgetting it's on this side. Um, for and it will be a link down below. Go to the video, my channel, and Sandy Duda from Left is Right Crochet. Little, 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 left is Right Crochet's channel, and go enter our Switcheroo three-year anniversary giveaway. Uh, we're giving away three boxes. Three boxes of yarn each. Six boxes all together, guys. So go check that out uh, and put your comment in our description box of that video. And good luck. <laughs> okay, guys, I think I've talked long enough. This has been like way long video. Um, hope you guys don't mind. I just need to vent. <laughs> I need to talk. <laughs> so... Uh, I love you all. I really do. Thank you so much. Oh, I totally forgot. April from Be Wow Crochet. Thank you so much. She sent us a wedding card. Um, that was so sweet of you. Um, thank you for taking the time to do that. I know that you you have your own health issues. And it was very sweet of you to think of us and take that time to send us that card. I love it. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to go and I will talk to you soon because don't forget the 31st in a couple of days is when Sandy and I are going to do the draw for our giveaways. Okay. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay. Bye.